Welcome to the Almost Perfect Podcast, a celebration of fuck-ups, failures, and falling flat on your face. This is a podcast that believes you can learn from experience, but that experience doesn't have to be your own. Ha, I'm Bob Perfect, and I'm a functional fuck-up. Let's learn from somebody else's mistakes. And today we are learning from Carmony. One name, who does she think she is? Seal? Uh, no, Carmony is a comedian who I have a lot of love for. She's part of the Not Quite Right crew, and is someone I've spent quite a bit of time with over the last two years or so, as uh, we've driven together to some gigs. As about two years ago, uh, I did a little open mic thing as things were opening up a bit uh, with the pandemic, and Carmony came through, and she was fucking hilarious. And I was just like, why why haven't I seen you before? And after that, I was basically just like, if you want it, like you can open for me, like with all the gigs that I do. Like basically any gig that I put on. This was before like not quite right became like a whole little collective. And I was just like, yeah, like if you want stage time, I'll definitely fucking give you stage time because I think she is fucking hilarious. And I think she's got potential to be one of the biggest acts in the country as time goes on so we'll see if my predictions come true in the next few years but yeah comedy is someone who got into comedy through drama yeah she studied drama 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 at ukzn she's even got her masters in it which we will discuss uh just now in the podcast she spends a few years after that quite a few years after that teaching at various universities and tertiary education facilities. But this year, she is not doing that. This year, she is uh, gonna be being creative. And you're probably gonna see her and I doing some cool stuff together. So that's something to look forward to. But yeah, this is a dope fucking chat. As you can see, it's quite a long chat. We were just chilling in my studio and fuck, we were laughing. We were just having such a good time that it just flowed. It was so, so dope. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. And I hope you do too. We get into stuff like grief and finding purpose and self-help and all manner of uh, topics as well as getting a little nostalgic over TV games. So yeah, this is quite a fun episode. This is one I think you're really going to enjoy. I really enjoyed it. Like even the edits was actually really easy because i was just like laughing the whole time listening back to the conversation so this one's a good one i think to kick the year off with and uh we do have some interesting guests lined up for the near future if i can just uh, pin some people down but i've got some cool names that i want to chat to and i'm very excited about that so yeah this is a good start to the year of the almost perfect podcast we'll see what the future holds but a good start you know (laughs) now it's just a matter of putting one foot in front of the other and uh, we'll eventually get where we want to go hopefully (laughs) hopefully or at least close at least somewhere fucking close but if you've been listening regularly you'll know i haven't necessarily been in the best headspace lately yeah a lot of shit's just uh, been catching up with me and also just you know the state of the world But this week I've been working through stuff, I've been journaling, I've been fucking doing yoga in the mornings, I've been reading, I've been meditating, I've been doing a lot of stuff that I like to get done in the mornings. And yeah, it helps man. And it's also, I'm doing dry January, so I haven't been drinking this month at all. So yeah, 12 days, 12 days without a drink. I know it doesn't seem like much to some people, but yeah like i've been a habitual drinker for a long time like i even did dry january last year and while it was a good reset to start the year with there were periods of last year where i was drinking too much too often and that's something i want to try and get a bit of a grip on this year so we'll see how that goes i'll chat to you guys properly about that at the end of the podcast because i feel like that could be quite a quite a long chat but for now i just need to let you know that this podcast is brought to you Bye. You. Uh, this is a fan supported and listener supported podcast. And that means you can support it by going to patreon.com forward slash almost perfect and subscribe for as little as a dollar a month. If you don't want to, you know, give me money every month, you just want to 
maybe give me like a little 50 bucks here, a little 100 rand there. You can go to almostperfect.co.za and you can just scan the zapper there and you can just put in whatever amount you like. Also, I've got merch. So check out the merch store over at almostperfect.co.za and you can uh, help keep us on air. Genuinely though, every little bit helps a lot, whether, you know, it's 10 rand or whether there's been people who have literally been patrons for ages and have spent thousands of rands and I will forever be truly grateful for that, so thank you. Uh, with that out the way though, it is now time for the Almost Perfect Podcast with Comedy. So how are you living, Comedy? I'm alright. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're doing the funny voices straight off the bat. Oh, you're no, you're clearly nervous. To, uh, yeah, I am nervous. Because I, like, I was like listening to Brene Brown and she was talking about like there's a difference between vulnerability and oversharing. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to overshare. You're a comedian. There's no difference. Oh. Have you listened to like any like American comedians podcast? It's all just oversharing and it's all just them being like, oh, mental health, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, fuck you, you're a fucking multimillionaire. Shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear about your problems. And they all, they all like promote better help. All these podcasts like better. Yeah. Yeah. And you you should get therapy and this and that. I'm like, yeah. (laughs) Better help is affordable. I know the whole (laughs) fucking the advert yeah. but the only like, the- I only know it from Mark Maron like well where it's like listen folks <laughs> uh- <laughs> yeah he I was just gonna say he's the one I listen to the most in yeah terms now of American yeah who was the comedian. new sponsor you got this week that's like Squarespace oh it's always Squarespace <laughs> for your website design fuck that's that's also the worst thing but oh it's Rocket Money is the new one like and oh. I've been seeing this on like I hate it because like I can't even like you know I've got ad blockers and shit like that and like I like that people are making money but they're all selling me NordVPN and fucking all the shit that like I don't what care about don't need VPN oh it's a VPN service but like in general oh oh, oh, oh yeah yeah, yeah so like, you can watch anything yeah I mean that that's what's useful about it but the whole like hiding your data hiding your thing or whatever you're not actually doing that like it's a false fucking thing like if you want to set up a like if you want a vpn like you've got to set that shit up yourself like you know with your own like home server and stuff and even then i don't even know like your data can always fucking be tracked is what i'm saying so don't like buy into the idea that like oh no i can watch porn and no one will know it's like <laughs> people going into what's it um the private mode or whatever <laughs> like, no, your service provider can still see that. Yeah, but um, I don't know why people have such a big deal about data collection because I find it quite handy. Like, I um, like getting personalized adverts. I do. I like knowing, like... <laughs> My personalized adverts just, like, aren't good. Like, and in general, oh, I just hate advertising, so... like Mr. Price, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it saw me searching for whatever, but... Every time I see the pop ups, I d- I'm like, oh, thanks, thanks, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I hate that. Like, I'll search for something and, like, maybe I'll buy the thing. And then for the next, like, fucking five weeks, my Facebook ads are all the same thing. I'm like, I've I bought the fucking thing already. That's why I was on the website. <laughs> like, fuck you, take a lot. Like, yeah, uh, it's all, but that's all just like, that's what the cookies thing is. That's why, like, I deny all, like, constantly. And yeah, for me, I hate it. Like I'm like a big privacy advocate. Like I don't like like how much data all these people have on us. And like, yeah. Why? Why? Okay, explain. Like because they're I making. I don't understand why it's a problem. For... Well, I mean, for me, it's just they're making money off of our like free fucking work, essentially. Like you know, we like that's also my issue with social media in general at the moment. Is we're creating all this stuff. We're doing all the work. For them to sell ads. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> it didn't. It's like we're, we're sold this promise of like, oh, free distribution, which has been like, you know, a thing like I'm stoked about with the internet. Like I like the early days of Facebook and Twitter and stuff when they weren't, you know, so money hungry and you had organic reach and you actually could connect with your audience. Yeah. And that. But even now on Instagram, like, no one's saying fuck all and, like, you know, stuff's in stories, but people barely actually, like, turn the sound off for that shit. So, and, like, you know, you're just clicking through, clicking through, clicking through until you see maybe one thing that you like and it's usually just a meme. So, I don't know. I'm just very disillusioned at the moment with all things social media and fucking internet for the most part. Yeah, because the weird thing is, like, 
with digital technology, you would think it would open things up more in terms of opportunity. Like in terms of of film, let's look at film, for example. You'd expect there'd be more space for more upcoming directors or storytellers because because there's so many platforms. But it's not the case. They keep like remaking or like <laughs> fucking live action i'm so sick of live action remakes and like yeah i don't get the fucking point of them to be completely honest yeah. with you like the re- who, like who wanted to see a real baboon <laughs> <laughs> holding a real looking lion over a club who i'm fucking with you there like the original lion king is one of the greatest films of all time yeah why like, fuck with it like <laughs> So it's not it's not opening things at all. It's in it's like squashing it in a way. It's not like Well, I mean that's that's a whole mess of problems <laughs> like that creating that. But I do think the cool thing about stuff like YouTube and, you know, Vimeo and if you use it like Daily Motion and stuff like that, and even some of the smaller streaming platforms is yeah, they do give, you know, different directors opportunities. Yes, like, yes, to YouTube showcase. especially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. But like the reality is you're not going to make fucking money off that shit. You're actually better off just submitting your stuff to film festivals around the world. Like there's lots. And like that's kind of how you start getting stuff seen by people who are actually looking for it. Yeah. Like, you know, actual producers and stuff like that. And you're better off networking the traditional way in some ways like than on the internet. Although obviously there's, I mean, it's such a broad fucking thing. Like, and it's, there's so many layers to it i guess i do think the internet has democratized things and i do think even something like netflix even though it's become pretty um i don't know everything's just the same now yeah yeah yeah. like they have over time given some decent yes no they have directors and like people the opportunity like stuff that you would never have known about you know gets out there but then you have stuff like the hunger games turning into a fucking reality show and you're like you missed the whole point point. (laughs) even um what's it called squid game it's like oh oh, sorry not hunger games yeah it was squid Squid game Game. that's what i was talking about (laughs) yeah it's like it was i haven't watched the reality show but i'm like did you not see what the series was about why would you do the exact thing (laughs) that it's critiquing oh my god yeah so it's all a fucking mess at the moment (laughs) yeah but but do you know what i actually because I used to use Twitter as like a very, it used to be like for me, like a source of news and like, yeah. I could keep up to, like now I'm so out of touch with what's happening. Like, I didn't know that Jacob Zuma has his own <laughs> party uh, now. I only like found out about that yesterday and it's like, I'm so. Yeah, you see, I've got like uh, Google News. So that is where like the algorithm stuff also comes yeah. in. Is like on my phone, I use Google News and like I'm constantly trying to like sort out the fucking algorithm, but Google's also a fucking mess at the moment. Yeah, Google keeps, they keep <laughs> like, thank you, Google. You keep giving me stories about succession and other things that I once <laughs> liked, it. but it's like, I want to know what's going on at the moment. You Literally, like saying? that's a, like, I'm all, like, you know, because I've, I'm into like Linux and stuff, learning about that, which is an operating system because of my laptops being old and shitty and like, and also just using something different to Windows and that. But now like half of the stuff is like Linux, then it's like gaming and then Israel, Palestine. (laughs) 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 And then what the weather's doing in South Africa because I'm always searching weather. (laughs) 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 Mine's also like yesterday it was like Golden Globe stuff. Oh, that's a little uh, bit the, of that, the fashion, yeah. and then at the bottom, it was like Oscar Pistorius's release. So it's also it's got that same sort of like it's so chaotic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's that's the thing. The personalized stuff. Like I don't know, like if this whole being siloed off into our own personal like realities is a good thing. Like I, I like I don't know. Like I'm not like also nostalgic for the past either necessarily, but like there are. Like, I think about things like SL Magazine and Blunt Magazine and that, where we had, like, this communal, like, thing that we were getting information from, and you could discuss it with people and that. And nowadays, like, you know, people are following different people and getting completely different information, completely different stuff. And so, you're literally living in a different reality to other people. Like, what you know and what they know is completely different. I was actually thinking about that the other day, like, um, in terms of, like, the personalized stuff. Because growing up in the 90s, like, the adverts were a huge part of 
Yeah, and everyone knows yeah, that. Yeah, like, and like you, it was a it was a communal thing, like to like the Oros ad, like everyone used to do that. will say everyone oh, now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's like uh, mango guava. Yeah, well, guava. <laughs> all those things. It's like um, you were sharing an experience in a way, and now it's like it's so personalized that you don't have that. I will say communal. though, like no matter what, like your algorithms feeding you, you will see skulk potato notes in an ad. <laughs> Oh yes, I keep singing them on Take A Lot. No, yeah. not Take A Lot, the it's, Uber Eats. There's oh. like the Discovery, there's all these fucking Uber ads. Eats. So no. like Skulk will find you. Yeah. Like. <laughs> no Uber Sweets and it gets it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. Skulk and then also Glenn Beatham and Pan. You will see other of those two guys yeah. like in an advert <laughs> somewhere. Like you won't know what they're selling, but like for me, I'm like, ah. It's so funny when I'm in Joburg and I'm like uh, with my family and stuff and DSTV's on and it's just like, oh, there's Lars. Oh, there's Robbie. Oh, there's like. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. Lars is also in a lot of chips ads. Oh, is he? <laughs> I keep getting this. Is it Lars? Is it Lars? No. Okay. It's the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> Which other guy? The other <laughs> black the, guy here. No, no, no. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> the one I, in the Simba Chips ad. Yeah, I could have been kind on you there and just said like, uh, you know, the other Gola, but yeah. <laughs> no, it was, I'd know it was, if it was Luis or Gola. No, for sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's tall as fuck. Yeah, he's tall as fuck. <laughs> His hands are big. Oh, so this has been interesting so far, but I feel like we know nothing about you. <laughs> I know, I'm trying to keep it that way. Yeah. Let's you... take in a cola. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing the White Lotus (laughs) theme song there? I love that theme song. Yeah, it's But I was trying to do a telephone. That's my telephone ringing. (laughs) 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 Hello, Uh, Cola. What would you like? So for listeners uh, who don't know comedy, she is a clown. uh, (laughs) Very much so. But also someone who will try to avoid any serious topic by making jokes. I'm so sorry. I tried to be vulnerable, like <laughs> Brene suggested. So I'm who, so scared I'm going to overshare. Who is Renee Brown? That lady. <laughs> <laughs> she's the lady on YouTube. I've she talks about, well, she's, a, she's an academic, I think. But uh, yeah, actually, she is an academic, but she wrote this book on vulnerability and shame. Okay. I saw on Oprah. Oh, wow. So. <laughs> So you know she's legit. <laughs> she's legit, exactly. Because <laughs> Oprah's got such a good track record with putting people on. Hey? I won't lie though, in um, because in 2020, like uh, my friend gave me like her old iPhone because I was having like phone problems, and from then I started listening to podcasts because I didn't listen before. And the first podcast I looked for was Miss Oprah. <laughs> That's wild to me. Like, I, like, think Oprah is, like, a fucking fraud. Like... Oh, well, yeah, now, now, yeah, now it's, it's very American. She's very... Yeah, but she's also just got whack ideas, like, about the world. Like, that's basically corroborated by her walls. She's like, oh, this shit worked for me. Like, you know... Oh, yeah, they're, they're trying to, like... What do you call it? Package and sell healing. Yeah. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Like, be yeah, it's and- weird new age spirituality, like nonsense that yeah. I just absolutely hate. Although one thing I want to like bring up that's been on my mind is all modern like psychology books are basically just self-help books. Like, I don't know if you've noticed this. Oh, like, yeah. I've read like, you know, so many, like, because I, li- I listen to Hidden Brain with Shankar Vedantham, um, which is kind of like. Say that again. <laughs> Yeah, this is Hidden Brain. I'm Shankar Vedantam. That's that's how he starts every episode. He's basically like uh, the non-jock version of Andrew Huberman. (laughs) Like, like, look, I don't fuck with Andrew Huberman Huberman either. I don't know who these people are. It's fine. I'm just gonna, but. Other way, like he, like it's about psychology, basically. Uh-huh. Like it's a podcast where he interviews all these different people who have like written books and like you know are smart as fuck and all of that. And I'm reading a book at the moment. Are they like modern philosophers or modern like psycholo- no, there's psychologists yeah, mostly yeah. in that. It's not really philosophers. Who's the, Andrew Huberman? Uh, he's so like he's this 
jockey scientist dude who tells people to take cold showers and you know chew nicotine and fucking do all these things to up you know these people that are trying to optimize their brains and bodies and stuff like that where shankar is not like that you know not necessarily they just delve into different aspects of self of psychology and like you know how it can help you basically so yeah the book i'm reading now is hidden potential the science of achieving greater things it's by this guy called adam grant and like there's some useful information on in it but like it is just It sounds like that Stephen Covey book the seven habits for successful <laughs> I mean, highly successful people. And yeah. <laughs> well this does have a bit more like that's the thing there's more science behind it there's more but like I've read like nudge which I don't agree with like cuz I feel like in its own way it's very um authoritarian. It's a, ni- it's a nice title though nudge. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got it's like it's got good points to it about how you know if you just up people into things instead of giving them the choice like you know for stuff like retirement funds and this and that they'll you know you make shit easier for people like you give them a little nudge but then doing that you can also control people's behaviors <laughs> like and that's the thing that like bugs me about just that whole thing but yeah like i've read Shaking like all these notes. fucking yeah <laughs> literally <laughs> that's why you read like the seven habits of highly effective people or how to influence people like how to make friends and influence people or whatever like yeah, yeah, yeah. the dale carnegie book which is just like a guide to psychopath uh, what well, sociopathy basically it's just like how to be a fake person so other people like you yeah. like i don't know i've got like i read some of these books and shit cuz i am like trying to just you know do better at laugh <laughs> like and also understand things better and like yeah i want to know how to like how people actually achieve things and that because like i feel like i've been stagnating a bit and like haven't necessarily reached the levels i want to but it's always just the same shit it's always just you got to do it every day you got to carry on oh, yeah. you got to like it's got to be a discipline it's got to be yeah and it's, it's like well that's the daily. fucking problem i have <laughs> It's going to be part of your your morning routine has to but I think they might be right about that. I'm trying no, to get my, they my are. morning routine right. And like I, I do believe in the whole like eat the frog theory. Like uh, I think it was Ernest Hemingway or some it was either Hemingway or it was who who was like the first stand-up comedian again basically the Lady Bruce. No, no. Jesus, you're like <laughs> 70 years like late at least. Um, the first one Mark Twain basically like there's there's arguments oh. there's arguments that Mark Twain's theoretically one of the earliest stand up comedians cuz his speaking engagements were humorous engagements oh, and stuff oh. like but i mean there's oh god the history of comedy is you know cuz there's vaudeville and there's blackface and there's all these things that like led to what we know as current mm. stand up comedy but other one other Hemingway or Twain i think it was probably Twain uh said if you've got to eat a frog you know eat it first thing in the morning <laughs> like and if you've got to eat two oh, yeah. eat the biggest you know? one first and like yeah that's a good way to deal with things but like it's like cool i've eaten the frogs and now i don't want to fucking do anything else <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i wake up and then yeah i can i can easily after i drink my coffee fall back to sleep oh, wow. even if i'm sitting Every morning I'm like ah like I've never woken up before. <laughs> like it's a surprise. Yeah, that But, is like the worst part about sleep. It's having to wake up every day. Like you're just like fuck again. Yeah. <laughs> is there anyone on planet Earth that was that wakes up like mm, that was the right amount. That was just enough. I'm good. I'm um, good for today. <laughs> probably rich people. <laughs> so. Yeah, like people who are just like who don't have work, and don't have shit to do. They're just like Yeah. yeah. That's what's the thing. Like if I was wealthy, that's what I would do. Like I wouldn't fucking be like these other people who are like, "Oh, you know, I've got to build things and do stuff and whatever." I'm like, "Nah, I'm cool." Like, I will, yeah, I'd actually do the same. No alarms for the rest of my life. <laughs> I wake up when my body tells me to wake up. <laughs> It's like, so weird when when the alarm becomes part of your dream. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's like a ship somewhere going. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Literally. Oh man, that is funny. Like I was oh like or when you I don't know like for me like I've slept at lots of people's places when I used to like go on tour with bands and like whatever. And then yeah, like in the morning like someone's calling you and stuff and then that's like in your <laughs> dream as well. And you're just like <laughs> interacting but like you're not awake and it's fucking weird. It is fucking when I was I remember distinctly in school like sometimes I'd be dreaming I was doing my morning routine 
And then I can hear my mother saying like, wake up, wake up. And I'm like, I'm brushing my teeth. And then I'd wake up and be like, oh shit. That is my least favorite <laughs> dream in the world is the one where you go to school or you go to work. And then you fucking wake, wake up, up. <laughs> and, you're and you're like, like no, <laughs> not a fuck off. Like I twice in one it. day. <laughs> like I've got to go through this twice in one fucking day. <laughs> yes. That's actually quite true. Like, why am I doing admin in my dream? Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Ask Freud. Look, he'll tell you it's about sex. <laughs> <gasps> Probably. Yeah. I do get very. I do get very horny doing boring things because I probably always think like if I okay oh guess <laughs> you can say come. like yeah, I'll come it'll it will moisturize my brain like it'll open my concentration yeah I don't feel that way at all for me it's more just like ah I'm bored now <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, my like, what, 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 what can I do for the next 10 minutes <laughs> and it's like ah oh, cool I feel good now okay let's do something else I feel actually yeah sometimes I do feel like a little energized and like like yeah it's a little break in between work yeah it like opens the and then I was like okay now I can do this boring stuff again because <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh that's a what you're saying is work should have fat breaks, basically. Yes. <laughs> like instead yes. of cigarette breaks, or some people can get cigarette breaks, you can choose. You either have a smoke break or you have a fat break. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just to open your mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, where did you go to school? <laughs> oh my gosh. I went to school in in a bougie I went to a bougie school I went to Maristella I mean I can tell by your diction oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> I used to get mocked so much for my diction when I was a kid well from family oh yeah, yeah but, so that's why you've uh, adjusted and corrected yeah but I mean I, <laughs> that's at least helped you with stage work I guess <laughs> but, yeah, but, uh, so I went there but I, I enjoyed it I enjoyed school a lot Wow. <laughs> no, I, I, cause I was an those only child. Those were the child. days, hey? No, those, those, I was an I only peaked. child too. And like, that's, I hated fucking school. Oh, I suppose, but. like, I, I preferred high school. I think in senior primary, I was trying to fit in. So I wasn't really like. And then primary school, I was very shy. I don't think I talked to anyone. So then, but high school, I think I peaked in high school. I think that <laughs> explains everything. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just got along with everyone. It's like the same now, where it's like in high school, I got along with everyone, but I wasn't close to anyone. Yeah, I wondered, yeah. like, so you're part of the Not Quite Right crew, but you're also like just this lone wolf who just like wanders off into the forest for like weeks <laughs> at a time and then like a comes wound. back. <laughs> and like, we're like, where you been? Like, you know, do you, who are your friends? Like, you know, it's like... That's the, that's the trouble. The, I have trouble uh, letting people in. Well, I've, I've let the wrong people in, I guess. Uh, I totally get that. And sometimes you don't know that. Like, like, I don't know. I've had people who I thought were, you know, very close to me pull some pretty weird You're... shit. And then I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it's like that then. But I think, like, that's also a thing I've been dealing with lately. Like, I mean, we were talking a little off-cast, and maybe we'll get into it. But for me, like, you know, grieving the loss of, like, friendships is something I haven't necessarily done. And, like... Like, friendships that ended with the person still... Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Um, it's not <laughs> quite, like, a, um, like, ambiguous death. I don't know if you've ever mm. heard of that term. It's basically when someone... Like, it can be about sickness and stuff like that. It can be about missing people. But there's also basically just the idea that people who you no longer have in your life, who are still alive, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you just aren't in contact with them or whatever. And like, there's that loss and that grief and that like thing that hangs on you. And yeah, like that's an actual just genuine grief of like so much death over the last, like since basically the beginning of the pandemic, but even stretching further back than that, like, like, I haven't been acknowledging it necessarily. And, like, that, like, in the last, like, month or two, rarely just, like, yeah. crashed down on me. That, that's, oh. that also, I feel like, it's a funny thing what happens underneath 
your consciousness? Because I also, I don't think I was necessarily consciously thinking of these things, but they all like randomly caught up on my birthday in September, like this sort of like the survivor's guilt of like, I'm here, these people are not, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? Like, not doing enough? Yeah, I'm not doing enough. Like, wh what is my, this whole thing, like you were talking about the self-help psychology and most of it now is about like, it's not about your work, what is your purpose on <laughs> earth? And I'm like, what the fuck is my purpose on earth? Like taking in these big... No, I take the Zen route <laughs> with that sort of stuff. It's just... It's just to be here, you're yeah. like, like I'm not like I'm really not spiritual, but I like the philosophical aspects to like a lot of Zen stuff and yeah, a bit Buddhism. But like Buddhism gets a little weird for me. <laughs> like which part gets weird? The, the I mean the reincarnation, the like, oh. like I understand, like I like the metaphor of everything being one and connected, and I'm just the universe experiencing yeah. itself and blah 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 blah. Like, but. At the same time, that's just a very um, grandiose, <laughs> grandiose um, way to. I had the the opposite. So, like when I went through this big grief that I think has changed me forever, I started to look at birds in a different way. Like, it, like sometimes there'd be this dove that sits on my balcony, and I'd be like. Bro, is it you? Is it you, buddy? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, like, it, and every time this dove but came... But you see, that stuff's helpful. Yeah. Like, that's why we do it. Like, that's why, like, I think people are attracted to a lot of these ideas and stuff, you know? It's like, they give you comfort and, like, it's nice to know. But, like, to me, I think people live on through us. Like, you know, I don't think there's, a, like, you know, an actual, like metaphysical like spirit or anything like that i think it is just the ex your experience of that person stays with you and you continue their legacy basically through how you act and stuff you you know think and share and all of that so we all are constantly continuing in people's lives but yeah like i don't think they actually i don't think they continue to exist like i think once we die we are dead <laughs> Really? Yes. In this whole big universe with like multiple planets and things that are so inexplicable, you think it's like the end end. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's life on other planets like that's, I mean, who knows what that looks like, but that's got nothing to do with like, you know, an eternal soul. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I suppose for me, it's just for comfort. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm open to the idea that sure, there's nothing, but I feel like I need the, the comfort of at least thinking or believing that there's some justice or peace on the other side. And yeah, I think the so, peace yeah. is to sleep, perchance to dream. Perform Shakespeare on the other side. But like <laughs> ah, but there's the rub <laughs> for what dreams may come as we shuffle off this mortal coil. Is that correct? Close enough. <laughs> Exit. Pursued by a bear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I misquoted. It's eggs you want. What <laughs> eggs you want? <laughs> Pursued by a bear. Yeah, we, I'm sure we've got some real Shakespeare heads like, you know, critiquing us right now. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so like I, I, I take comfort in that idea of, of the spirits going on a different journey after this and like seeing. Yeah, I like know, the idea. Yeah, I like the idea that. <laughs> I, I may get a chance to see you again or reconnect with you. And yeah, it's, it's comforting, but I'm also like, yeah, it's, it's all a big mystery. Like, of I course. wish people, I wish human beings would take that in a little bit more. Like, I the think some mystery. people take it in too much and make it their whole personalities. And like, you know, no, like, the, like, you know, chakra hands and like, woo woo, like people and stuff who are like, you know, like, they take it to a point. I'm a chakra hand, bitch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but like people take it to a point where it's just like nonsense. And I'm like, yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like I like the idea of like, you know, I'm the universe experiencing itself or whatever. That can, you know, be a, you know, we're all insignificant, blah, blah, blah. This is just an experience, you know, like I'm just, you know, participating in it. I'm just watching it happen basically. But like I say, the idea that you are the fucking universe <laughs> to me is very like grandiose and like it's very like arrogant and 
while it can have a similar effect to like the idea like oh that we're insignificant, I think sometimes like people place like a high level of importance of themselves and like I don't know, like I just see a lot of the ideas that like I play with and like mm. like to explore in that just being internalized in ways that are like I think it's because of stuff like social media and that's where everything you do becomes your identity. And so like people will get into like some left field shit, some like esoteric shit, and then just make it like, you know, this is the truth. Oh yes, that's what I'm saying. That's why the mystery needs because the what I'm talking about in that people need to embrace the mystery is like So now we're getting Jungian. Yeah. We were Freudian earlier, now we're Jungian. <laughs> we're Jungian. <laughs> but like, um, that's a funny word. Jungian. Jungian. <laughs> <laughs> I've Don't joined the union. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually funny. The union union. <laughs> so it's, if uh, they had like an onion soup, it would be like the union union. union union's onion. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'd like a plate of deep, deep fried unions. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible one. That's, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry. See, okay, let me go back to the mystery. Like, I apologize for that deep fried union. <laughs> <laughs> but the mystery is what I mean is like people need to embrace the opposing idea. So if, like for me personally, I like to believe that there is a God in a spiritual world, but I need to be open to the idea that there's nothing. And the person who believes there's nothing needs to also have a little bit, you know, like portion of like, I mean, of course, these like, opposing ideas have validation because none of us have died. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't know. I get that. But to me, like I've explored a lot of the ideas, you know, like yeah. the reason why I don't believe in like anything is because I've been Christian and that, you know, I've gone through, like I've read like tons of stuff about like tons mm. of religions and like, yeah, like I've explored a lot. Like I've learned a lot about history. I've learned a lot about how religion, you know, is manipulative and how like the political aspect to all of it and how it's a method of control and all these things. And so like, I don't also I just think our brains are too fucking small to even comprehend yeah, like yeah. half the ideas that like we're espousing. Like the idea of a god existing, like I don't think any version that we've come up with like could accurately accurately describe it. Like I like the idea of the Tao and stuff, mm. but like that's at the same time, like of course we came from fucking something. Like yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. the big bang and blah blah blah. What pre what happened before that? Who fucking knows? Mm. And that's also where I'm at with a lot of stuff where it's like yeah, a lot of that I don't really care about anymore. It's just like, I'm just like, I know for myself at least, there's definitely no like God that we have conceptualized. Like there's yeah. no God of a book, like, you know, exists to me. Like I think personally, like it, it's just silly. Like, you know, yeah. once I've read through everything and that, I'm like, no, this is just people <laughs> coming yeah, up with like ideas idea. to understand. Oh, like that Ricky like, Gervais film, uh, the one where he can't lie. and Oh, uh, the invention of lying or something. Yeah, 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 where he comes up yeah. with these, like, basically. I fucking basically, hate Ricky Gervais. I've actually been, like, thinking about doing a, like, um, video essay <laughs> of uh, Ricky Gervais, world's most annoying atheist. <laughs> yeah, that guy needs to embrace some mystery and shut the fuck up. Yeah. If, uh, <laughs> I'm so sick of, like, comedians like Ricky Gervais who keep saying things like, we can't say anything anymore. And then but saying it and getting paid millions to do it. Yeah, but like you can say anything, but people also have a right to, to say response. things yeah. back. Like nobody, like what do you mean you can't say it? Like it can't come out your mouth. They, and But they, they're also all saying the same dumb shit. It's just like, oh, you can't say anything anymore. You know, women have cocks now, blah, blah, blah. And you're just like... This is boring. This is like, That's also, did you watch? Um, no, I haven't seen the new Dave Chappelle. <laughs> oh, I watch it. So, in terms I'm of. I'm done. I'm fucking yeah, done. The I don't Closer even... was the worst thing I've ever watched in my life. It was like a boring TED talk. <laughs> but, that's but, what, that's what his, but that's what his comedy has become now to me. It is like these weird, like, 
TED Talks that are moralizing in like the wrong direction. Oh, yeah. Like the closer, I was like, what are you trying to say? It's, he's like, he there's that one bit where he talks about like J.K. Rowling sold more than the Bible and people are saying, and it's like, what are you yeah, saying? Yeah, what's the Rich point? Rich people can't be critiqued. Is that what you want to tell us? Like, yeah. But like his recent one, what I was, what he was doing, or what I could see that he was doing was like, he's like sort of insults everyone, like even as Asian, like. Ooh. Yeah, I've heard about like that's it's the thing. I'm, I'm aware of the discourse. I'm not, yeah. like I'm on YouTube enough that like I know everything that like people. <laughs> I'd rather watch a critique of Dave Chappelle at this point than actually watch, watch Dave him. Chappelle. But this this last one, the dreamer. So he does that, but I think it's like it's part of his whole structure that leads to like. Is that called like lampshading or whatever? Yeah, I think that's the term. Because his final point is like you know like with the Will Smith Chris Rock thing, he said like. He can understand both sides because he can easily be offended by anything. So, like the oh. the offensive comments were like he's smart. Hard. I'll give yeah. him that. He sets up his arguments well. Like yeah, so it was even that Superman Bill Cosby, but like I hate it, but I get the logic. Like, yeah, yeah. So like I could see the logic of what he was, but it was still not entertaining. Those jokes were still like that's also awful. a thing. He's yeah. like kind of abandoned the first rule of comedy. Yeah, just make it funny. Yeah, and it's like, I see how it fits. And he has the audacity to train Hannah Gadsby, and it's just like, you're the same at this point. But the, the thing is, Hannah Gadsby, at least in her se second special, she says, I know Nanette was not standard yeah. co comedy. She says, like, I really enjoyed I used, a new one with, like, the dead rabbit, like, story oh. and stuff. Like, <laughs> fuck, that's hilarious. Like, she's but, got a dope style. Well, they've got a dope style. Like, yeah. yeah. But, like, she addressed it. Basically, she says, like, that wasn't stand-up comedy. I used the form to tell the story. Yeah. But I admit that was not stand-up <laughs> comedy. She can do that, but he can't, He can't like, reflect on his own work and be like, this is getting boring. I <laughs> <laughs> like, but I, I just think he's also bought into the cult of himself, essentially. You know, like, he's like, you know, people call me the goat. And, like... <laughs> yeah. It's like you're like if you're buying into that, like that's a fucking problem. Like, yeah, but I don't know. Whatever. I'm also kind of done just giving that shit time anymore because there are like people like Hannah Gatsby. There's you know May Martin. There's like all these other dope fucking comedians who are challenging. Cat Williams things. is way better. Than Dave Cat Williams. Yeah, I love Cat Williams. <laughs> I mean. To me, the Pimp Chronicles is like the only thing of his like I really love. Oh. Like I've watched, you know, World War whatever's and stuff like that. And yeah, there's some good jokes in that. But like, uh. I'm I'm happy for him. I've got nothing <laughs> against Cat Williams. But to me, the Pimp Chronicles was like the pinnacle. The, yeah. Yeah. Cat Williams also had like a crazy interview. I've recently. heard about it. I know <laughs> all about it. Like I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it, but I read some of the quotes and. <laughs> One thing he's like, Cedric the Entertainer is complaining he's not in the industry. He looks like a walrus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like, but that what was funny about that to me was just like, it just shows you how much comedians love drama. They do. Oh, my God. Like Some the, comedians must just be quiet. <laughs> all comedians must just be quiet unless they're on fucking stage. Oh, yes. Why do they feel the need to come up, up to you and like... Like, you know, as a comedian, it's natural that you're going to reflect after your show and see what works, what doesn't work. Why must they come up straight afterwards to be like, maybe try this, maybe say this. It's like, um, maybe give me some time to, like, breathe. But that also just feels like some mansplaining shit. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The one, there was, there, like, this one comedian, he said to me that, um, I have this joke about Tabo Besta, but he said, like, the Tabo Besta joke is only funny because you're a woman. And then I was like, wait, no. And then I thought about a joke, like, in my head. Like, I wrote him a joke about Tabo Besta as a man. And I was like, no, it was funny because I came up with it, bitch. <laughs> and you didn't. So maybe shut the fuck up. I mean, yeah, fuck. There's so much weird saltiness. And, like, that's also the thing. Like, with the... It's dope when people give advice but it's also like i think if you've been doing comedy for less than five years maybe shut the fuck up yeah maybe yeah keep 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 it chill <laughs> like it's like i'll like, ask for advice i will like i will if i like yeah but i just need like, we've time had long yeah. discussions and like, yeah yeah 
So it's like, it's not like I don't appreciate it, but sometimes, like, comments like that, they're not helpful. It's like, what are you saying? Why are you saying that? Well, it's because like, they're trying to give themselves a level of authority that they haven't earned. Yeah, yeah, I was, like, pissed off They're trying off to big by, dog you. Yeah, like, they big dog. <laughs> and I was, like, I was a little bit drunk at the time, so I didn't say anything back. And then I went home and thought about it, and I'm like, no. No, but there's yeah. an audaciousness to some people that, like, I just... I struggle the audacity. with audacity. <laughs> no, I mean you know, like I struggle with like comedians. Like I've got like people I'm fuck with, but there's a fuckiness like that permeates like you know stand up <gasps> comedians. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you stories after after the podcast. <laughs> Anything we can share. You don't have to mention names. No, there's some. Sometimes I feel like they're trying to derail you before you go on, so that you're not as. I mean, I do that a little. Like, I fuck with people. <laughs> they, fuck, they get in your head a little like, bit. Like, I'll come and, like, and whisper to you, don't be cock. Uh, like, oh, no, no, not the, like that. That's uh, fine. Yeah. Because that's, I mean, that's a tradition here in, in Durban. Yeah, like, yeah. And I think in comedy around South Africa, like, or it was at least, it was just like, that was always the advice before someone went up on stage. Don't be cock. Yeah, don't <laughs> be cock. That's fine. It's like when, I think I should tell you after, after the show. Don't mention the name. <laughs> just tell us a story. Because, okay. like, here's the thing. Like, being you know, a relatively new woman on the scene in that, you're obviously experiencing a different experience to what new men on the scene will yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. Although, like, obviously they will get certain people in the scene who think that they know a lot sharing really terrible advice with them. Like, it is different. Yeah. So, the one the one day we were performing and then this one comedian, he comes up to me and he's, like, still... I don't know what we were talking about, but then... Th his whole tone and his face changed and he was like so when are you taking me home with you oh wow <laughs> and like and the, he said he was joking like i could to his credit after i like spoke to him he's never done that sort of stuff again sure but, but like my respect for him like shrunk a little bit but it was like it didn't feel like a joke because if it was a joke you would have said it in front of everyone the tone it's yeah. like i know no, what a joke not, is yeah. yeah and then um he did this really weird Can't wait thing to find where, out this is afterwards no, he did this really weird thing where he like blocked my way and and like uh, i couldn't move. Uh, like childhood like like boy bullying like the girl because he likes her kind of shit no because after he said that i don't know he said like so when are you saying and then i said like never and then he sort of like blocked my way and he's like he made me say my name like as a sort of an encouragement like cuz i always look nervous before sure before shows so i think he was trying to be encouraging so he he sort of like stood in my way and said like who are you who are you and i was like and i'm like i'm comedy that's right and then you know like he's trying maybe he was trying to be in encouraging face or like from what he had said before probably. yeah yeah it was like i didn't feel comfortable and i remember that night like i kept blanking on stage oh sure i think i remember that night so like so that's why i'm trying to be like stronger in myself like not so shakable by things like that if they do happen but that was the only one that was like that maybe like I don't I wouldn't say I was shaken or I wasn't traumatized by it. I was just like creeped out. No, I was just like this is so unnecessary. Like you, but that's also uh, like, like the thing. Like for like your existence as a woman, it's like there's so many unnecessary interactions from fucking yeah. men. Like I know this from having girlfriends and stuff like that, and they'll just tell me all these things. I'm just like for me personally, I've learned like, hey, don't be a weirdo. Like, yeah. you know, like you can be flirty and cool, but also, you know me, I've got like the rule of don't shit where you eat. Like, don't date but comedians. Don't to, I wouldn't. And like, <laughs> but like, the thing was, it was it didn't feel like jovial or fun or like a joke. Yeah. It like, And I you know those experiences because you've been through them a million yeah. times. But like, so that, that was the one day where I felt like a little bit like, fuck, I'm always going to have to go through something like this somewhere. <laughs> Oh, yeah, uh, shit, if we travel, like, <laughs> oh, there's, yeah, like, I know some, like, woman comedians who have been in the scene a bit longer than you that have, have some fucking stories, yeah. like, and I'll tell you some people to stay away from, but, yeah. like, holy fuck, yeah, it's, 
it doesn't seem that bad here, but there is like, you know, there's a lot of creepy dudes in comedy. Yeah. And yeah. There's a, what's that guy's name? <laughs> the greasy American com- comedian. I mean, which one? <laughs> which one? But like, yeah, they, they, they're around, but like, um, some, some experiences are not so, like the one day, like at Stump Nose, one of the audience members asked me to sit on their lap, but I didn't find that. I just found it so funny. I was like, no, I don't know. I didn't feel as creeped out. Because you're not going to have to see them again as well. Yeah, I'm not. It, that's the thing. I, th- maybe that's the thing. So that one, I like, I don't, I didn't feel so bad or like. That's what bums me out. Like, yeah, when dudes do shit like that, where it's like, bro, you're like going to see each other again next week. Yeah. And that's why, like, when. when and so it's like, I wait there has for to be a vibe it. before you do shit like that. You know, you flirt a little, you see if there's yeah. like, you know, something there and then you pull a line like that. Like, yeah. Yeah. There was no vibe. It wasn't a joke. I was like, it was just, I felt, cre- it was creepy. I felt <sighs> creeped. I felt, and I, since then I just see that guy as a, a little bit of a creep and he hasn't redeemed, because it was the same person who said that thing about Tabo Besta later. Oh, know? wow. So it's okay. the same same so like whenever the i always look at the lineup because i i want it to be fuller so that there's space but i don't want this person to see me alone and start talking to me because sometimes sometimes i feel like maybe he's trying to throw me off because what else could it be i mean i don't know it feels like he's probably embarrassed like you know by being rejected like but in like wasn't even gutsy enough to really like throw himself out there and like he's just dealing with his own fucking insecurities yeah. and so he's trying to act out <laughs> but that's been the only like thing but to his credit i did confront him and he hasn't he hasn't really made any well, comments like that <laughs> so again so uh, to his credit but then yeah <laughs> portion of my my love for him has gone <laughs> so yeah advice to dudes don't be a creep. <laughs> Don't be a creep. Yeah. And we know the difference. I hate it when guys say, like when I confronted him, he was like, no, it's just joking. I was like, I know what a joke is. Stop telling Don't me. Don't like, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know when I can interpret when something's a joke. Like, I'm not a, I'm not so bad that I'm like, oh, I'm harassed. I'm like a delicate, <laughs> violent flower. And you're pissing on me <laughs> <laughs> i know yeah i'm uh, yeah, and that sort of thing like uh would you have more respect for him if he just owned it and was just like ah my bad yeah i think i did have a little bit more respect for him after the i told him because he he didn't realize he made me feel that way. It seemed sure. very genuine. He didn't realize that he made me feel that way. But then later, so like later, the Tabo Bested line came later. I so it wasn't so. at the same yeah. time. And after that, I was like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, there's honestly. some hurt feelings there. Yeah. <laughs> it's only funny because I'm a woman. It's like, okay, maybe, but like I could write you a Tabo Bested joke. I mean, joke. those jokes yeah. are only funny because some people are black, some people are men, some people are like... Yeah. Yeah, like Why? it does come... Like sometimes, you know, like I know jokes like that I tell work because of how I look, how I present myself, yeah. how I'm dressed, like how I like... Like how I literally perform jokes means that like my weed stuff and like my drug stuff and all of that makes sense because you're like yeah that guy clearly fucking smokes weed and does drugs yeah but like you know if i was there in a fucking suit with short hair and whatever like people would be like why is this guy fronting you know yeah so me it, it was like an unnecessary thing so then again lost my th- and then <laughs> another comment he made he third said strike. <laughs> yeah third strike was like i was a little bit high and i think maybe i heard wrong but he said something like you're funny, but maybe comedy is not for you. So I was like, but me, that's again. I know that when you tell me this, like who it is, I'm going to be like, that guy, that guy, that guy. I'm not going to tell you who it is because I don't want to ruin like. What if I already think negatively of almost everyone no, anyway? No, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to tell you his name, but I, I'm just telling you the, the experiences okay. that have happened that have made me. Maybe think I'm either not strong enough or maybe I'm pursuing the wrong thing or like 
You know, no. it's like in, in a questioning zone. I just wish I'd learned about this sooner because, like, yeah, like, I'll tune people, like, hey, fuck off. Because, like, one of my big issues, like, that we have in comedy is how much of a boys' club it is and how the space, like, because of, like, it being a boys' club isn't inviting to yeah. a lot of women. Like, you know, you, you got to be one of the boys or, like, fuck off kind of thing. Yeah. And, like, I just don't really fuck with that, like, at all. Like, I want different experiences. I'm tired of hearing the same perspectives all the fucking time. And, like, basically the same jokes half the fucking time, just t- told slightly differently. Like, especially if you go to open mics, you know, like, people starting out always seem to come up with the same jokes, you know? So, like, yeah, I, I'm fucking bored sometimes, like, just by the whole brohood of everything oh. but i will say to it's not as to anyone who who wants to it's not as these were like maybe 10 percent of my experiences when 90 percent was actually really yeah positive and welcoming and the bros to their credit are like like bros they <laughs> they it almost feels like you're with cousins or whatever they might tease you or whatever but you they you're do talking about help like the you. not quite right crew, basically. Yeah, they 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 like welcome you. I remember the one day, like the first time I was headlining. I don't know why, like I was, I wasn't doing so well in the in September anyway. But like I didn't want to lose the opportunity. But it, I I just didn't do so well that night. And all the other comedians who were guys on the lineup were like really sweet. They were like saying some really like supportive things like keep going and like you got it you know so there have been sweet moments also <laughs> that's and good it has all been like yeah this cool. is only one i know we've had lots of great times in that you know like the drives yeah. to stump nose and then, yeah. yes i miss the drives to stump nose and our dmc's on the way yeah like for people who don't know uh comedy and our thelma and louise <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you always like in your messages just call me Thelma. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. you always tell me you know they die at the end. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Willfully uh, being well, chased by the police, yeah. It's unclear though. You only see the car go over. Oh, okay, so what do you think? They just jumped out at the last second and then surrendered to the police? Maybe they landed on another cliff oh, safely. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sam that would completely <laughs> like ruin the whole point of the fucking movie. <laughs> I don't remember the fu- the whole movie. Uh, I remember pretty well. I've watched it quite a few times. It's you know early Brad Pitt baby. <laughs> <gasps> oh yeah, I remember that scene of him in the petrol station. Well, yeah. they call it a gas station, but yeah. Yeah. So Good. you're referencing a thing you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know the general premise that they're two ladies who drive in a Corvette. Yeah, and then a guy tries to rape one of them, and the other one, I think the other one kills him, and then. Oh yes, yeah, they're on they the run. Yeah. yeah. So I, I know the plot, and Gina Davis and um, Susan Sarandon. Susan Sarandon. Two thumbs up. So. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. Um, but yeah, so we've. Like, that's the thing. We've actually gotten quite close because of comedy. Like, you... I think you started beforehand, but, like, I did a random, like, open mic thing at a friend's cafe, like, that was kind of terrible, but you came through. Like, you emailed me because I, I was also... I was not putting my phone number on the internet. So I was not taking Facebook inboxes or whatever. I was like, I'm going to do an open mic. If anyone wants to join in, just email me. And you're one of the people that emailed me. And then I saw you, and I was like, holy fuck, you're funny. Where have you been? But you told me you had been, like, doing yeah. stuff before, but, like, shit, like, was weird. It was, I think the thing was, I didn't know comedy was the thing. Like, stand-up comedy was the thing. I've always, like, it's almost like I was dabbling on the side of... Because you've done my, acting and stuff, you yeah, studied, yeah. and what... Yeah, let's actually just talk about that before we get into the comedy, because, like, we're not going to get into it if I don't, like, <laughs> talk about it now. <laughs> so, what did you study? So, okay, I studied... Trauma and performance studies. <laughs> like, there was an interest in performing. At UKZN, right? Yeah, UKZN. And I will say, okay, maybe we'll get to it later about how I realized maybe stand-up is the thing. Well, I assume as the story gets told, we'll finish there. <laughs> we'll finish there. But, like, um, at the time, it was, like, um, the the motivation for drama and performance studies was really because I wanted 
to be in sitcoms. <laughs> so <laughs> when I you think wanted of, to be a stand-up comedian in the 90s. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Like, like, and it, it's so true that saying, like, you can't be what you can't see. So I think, yeah. like, during the early 2000s, I don't remember even watching stand-up specials to begin with. Oh, wow. I'd, I'd seen, like, five-minute sets and stuff like that. But, like, I'd always watch a movie if it was on. So if a stand-up special was on, I'd always, like... Pick something else. Pick something else at the time. So this is 90s. I'm a young person. <laughs> <laughs> just just for context. But, I um like, Julia Louis-Dreyfus... Oh, yes. She doesn't... She sort of, like, looks like some of my family members, features-wise. Okay. You know, like, the slender yeah. nose, the curly hair... Her skin is like, it's not exactly like white, white. 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 White, so, white, white, white. white, white. She was not white, white. She not seemed white. like, she was, she was not. <laughs> she's not quite white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like seeing her like unconsciously, it, it's sort of like, like I could be do, there, yeah. yeah, I could be there. Because I felt like. I'm not saying we look alike. I'm <laughs> saying like I saw features in her that I have. Like yeah. I had curlier hair when I was younger and like <laughs> <laughs> slender long nose. But like um, it seemed possible, I guess, you know. And I think not seeing woman comedians, I never like clicked the idea that I could be one. This is also why one. I want more woman comedians yeah. on stage so more women see it. But yeah, yeah anyway. So growing up, because I, d- I didn't see it, I maybe didn't know that was a pathway. I mean, maybe for, unconsciously, I, I mean, don't even know. For me growing up, like <laughs> I think, you know, the only woman comedian I'd seen was like Ellen DeGeneres. Like mm. other than that, you know, like I was taping a lot of the Mnets, like whenever they would yeah, have yeah, the yeah. HBO specials and stuff like that. So I had like George Carlin and I had like uh, some Richard Pryor. I had... Various like different things like on tape and that, yeah. but the only woman I really remember from that time was Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and it's like I knew that's tough because I only knew Ellen as from her TV show Ellen. Yeah, like I didn't oh know. yes, which yeah. was around the same time. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't even like I didn't know her as a stand up. So it's also my ignorance. I mean, even like, Margaret um, Cho. No, not Margaret. Yeah, yeah, I think Margaret she, Cho. She yeah. had uh, sitcom in the nineties yeah. as well. Yeah. So I even Roseanne. So I, oh yes, yeah, I knew yeah. Roseanne, but I didn't know her comedy. I only yes. know her comedy like l- much later. So a lot of these women were like comedians, but I I hadn't seen it or so I I only recognized acting as a possibility for me. So that's what I tried to pursue, but I'm obviously not a great actor. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, because I don't get vulnerable. As I said, like. Sure, but I mean, it, stage acting, you don't actually need to be proper. Oh, viable. yeah, no, no. Stage acting, I kill. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. <laughs> like, you've got, like, you've got the personality for it. I'm like, <sighs> stage acting, I'm terrible at because it's like, what? I've got to, like, do stuff? No, like, I just want to, like, you know, fucking slightly raise my, like, rat, you know, lip. <laughs> like, and then, like, you know. You'd be great as a film actor. Maybe. Like, I would like to give it, like, a decent go. But that's Me the thing. I know, too. like... Let's write a script, bro, because I also want to give it a I decent I mean, I've got shot. so many half-finished fucking scripts at the moment. Finish. But we can find, find, find something. something. Yeah. There was that one you spoke about with the... the Where the girl calls her ex to to buy her drugs. Like, I can't remember this. You don't remember that one? I was so keen to do it. And what, then, what was the vibe? The vibe was, like, um they they've recently broken up. And she calls him because she wants cocaine. And he was the one who used to get her cocaine. And they have a brief conversation, obviously, because okay. she wants... Was this meant to be funny or... <laughs> I don't know. You just told me the premise. You didn't tell me, like, what the vibe... Fuck, I don't was... even remember this one. You don't remember like, this no. one? No. Shit. But, like, I've literally got, like, lists and, like, oh, I've got so much stuff. Like, you know, that I want to do that uh, skit of come down with me. Oh, yeah. I love... <laughs> Come Dine With Me is, like, my favorite reality show in general. Really? <laughs> yeah, there's such weirdos on that show. That's <laughs> true. Like, I've seen it when I'm at my mom's house, and I'm just like, wow. That's all I do. And I've I... seen, like, I've had friends be on there, like, uh, Martin Evans was on there. Oh, yeah. I didn't watch this other episode his, one. Oh, and his episode's, like, legendary, because, like, him and this other guy, like, get into, like, a whole, like, spat, and, like, it's, oh, yeah. it's hilarious. Yeah. 
I've seen that episode. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if it's on YouTube. But like, <laughs> it'll be replayed. Trust me, they replay it <laughs> at least like twice a year. Because I don't, I don't have a TV, so I also only watch Come Dine when I'm at my mom's. Like that's <laughs> the one thing I look forward to watching. It's because they're such like random weirdos. Okay, but anyway, we were talking about you acting. Fuck, we're getting derailed. Oh. Yeah, and we're talking about you studying and stuff like that, and then getting into comedy. So you th- you wanted to act because you saw it on TV. You were like, "This is something I can do." Yeah, yeah, and th- yeah, I think I really wanted. I think as a kid in the '90s thing, was that I really wanted to be in the TV. Same. Like, I wanted yeah, to be yeah. a KTV presenter. Yes. Oh. I was, so I asked Jenna Dover at a cricket game, like, "How do I do it?" She was like, oh, you need to get, like, representation and this and that. And so that's how I became a model for, like... You were a model? <laughs> yeah, because Bob. I was like... Yeah, I, well, yeah, I, like, been in some ads and I did some <gasps> ramp work and stuff. Like, I did stuff for, like, Boss Models. I did a whole, like, like thing. Shit. Like, I had a graduation and everything. Like, I, I can walk the ramps, you know? <laughs> But, like, it was because of that, because I was like, okay, well, what? how do I do that? And Durban, like, I don't know any acting things or this or that, but, like, there was this, like, yeah, like, modeling thing. I don't, And I don't think it's, like, the big boss models. I think it was, like, a small little, like, thing that just called themselves yeah. boss models. But anyway, I did get some work out of it. But, like... It's uh, a, there's surprisingly a lot of, like, model gigs, like, as you're saying. There's so many... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, like, it wasn't, like, actual proper representation that could get me onto TV. But, like... <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, at that time we all had to. If you wanted to be on TV, you had to live near Auckland Park. Basically, yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought, yeah, worth you know traveling for, worth moving. <laughs> you know? But yeah, fuck delusions of grandeur. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, do I still have delusions of grandeur? It's like my dissociation thing. Like any, <laughs> anytime someone's having an argument, it's like, well, guess who's off my imaginary thank you speech now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, like, that's also the thing, like, so, like, I'm anti-awards and stuff, but, like, I want to win a big award and just not be there. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like, I, I really couldn't give a fuck. I think the whole system's whack, but... Oh, there's, someone tweeted something in, when I was on Twitter. It was about the, the awards, Oscars and things, when it was, like, really not recognizing some great Yeah, films. Oscars so what? <laughs> yeah. But in general, they were not recognizing like great comedy films, and like they, you know, it was yeah. like they only recognized these same stories. Yeah, there's Oscar baits. Basically. Yeah, the Oscar baits. So then someone tweeted something like, "Award shows are fun, but it's it's more like a business thing." Yes, like, uh, no, that's it. It's yeah. a PR thing. It's a PR. Like winning thing. an award, like if anyone ever feels good about themselves after winning an award, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> Like, for real. Because it doesn't mean anything other than you can charge more money. Yeah. Like, and more people know about you. Like, it's a business thing. You can utilize that or whatever. But it doesn't mean you're the fucking best. Yeah. At all. Like, it means that, you know, a certain, like, the, like, the people voting, the judges or whatever, liked your shit more than the other stuff that was in your small little fucking thing. There's thousands of movies made every fucking year that's, Half the fucking people don't even get to see. Most people don't even get to see. And just because this one's big and famous and shit, you're telling me it's better than something that's, you know, I like yeah, there's yeah. so many options. So that's one of my like gripes with awards. But the funniest thing is the Academy Awards were started. I can't remember the guy, but like basically he hated unions and shit like that. And he was like, cool, we'll give them awards and stuff to like keep them happy. Like, yeah, yeah. That was it. Like they're little trinkets to like, you know, <laughs> make people like chase after that aren't fucking real. It's not real. Like, it's, yeah, it's a cool tag to have. It's a cool thing to go like, oh, okay, this guy's probably pretty good. Yeah. But it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And the, and the, the tweet said, like, art makes an impact regardless of awards. Exactly. Yeah. But so. whether or not people get to see the art often depends yeah, on whether yes. or not they're even nominated if for awards. Not, exactly. Like, people will watch the Oscar-nominated films, but, like, yeah, there's so much other stuff that, like... But that's why I'm grateful to be off a lot of, like, I'm barely on, like, I'm online, but just in different spaces these days. Because, like, I'm not on Instagram. Like, I've, like, don't have it on my phone anymore. I've used mm. the business suite to post and I'll check on my computer and stuff like that. I've been off Twitter for probably, like, a year now. Like, it's been forever. Facebook's just useless anyway. Like, <laughs> yeah. But I will say, I do miss 
old Twitter, original yes. Twitter, because it was such a great source, like I was saying, for news, for what's happening, and for like perspectives. Like, like I learned a lot from Palestinian civilians themselves sure. tweeting. You know, it's stuff I didn't know before. Like, um, someone spoke about like uh, in Palestine how it was a tweet. It was like a thread about the ecological genocide that's happening with the uh, oh, with olive trees and yeah, yeah yeah changing the salination of the soil yeah and i was it's like stuff i didn't know so yeah, i did some learn evil e- fucking shit yeah. going on like it has been yeah. going on for a very long time like for me i'm grateful for the durban international film festival because i watched a film called five broken cameras oh yes 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 and that like really like made me learn more about it and like so that's why i've been like pro-palestine for basically since then because like it made me go wait what the fuck's going on yeah because i didn't understand like before like, everyone's like oh it's so complicated yeah you know? yeah and it's also confusing because because of the name israel because it's like it's in the old school yeah. text yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Israelite, israelites, israelites yes. and stuff, stuff like that so that's why it was confusing but when you yeah, the situation is like, there's no complication at all. How is this allowed to happen? How can someone... Because it's useful for certain global powers. Yeah. And it's like, uh, that's... We're not going to get into that now, yeah, no, but, no. but it's a whole fucking thing. But anyway, so acting. <laughs> acting, all right. <laughs> Back to acting. Yeah, because so, you've done a few plays and stuff. You've written stuff as well, right? Like, oh, so that's the... Um, th- so I studied, and I must say, nobody was happy about me studying drama. What, but, with your family? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was, like, as an Indian woman, was it meant to be engineering, no, medicine, was, or... It wasn't like that. It was more, like, stability. It's like, what are you going to do? And then, I like, I didn't know... See, I'm lucky. My mom just, like, worked two jobs and shit. So she was just like, I mean, it's going to be a struggle no matter what you do. So (laughs) And I didn't know. And actually, in in the second year, I wasn't enjoying it. I wanted to drop out. But I was too scared to say that. Why didn't you enjoy it? I don't know. I just, I wasn't, it was very, like, limiting. Like, I, I didn't feel... I just wasn't feeling like it was a lot of theory. Like I sure. had to write a lot of essays, and I I've heard that. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm someone who's always struggled with focus. So like <laughs> I I used to do like I used to do it well, but it was always like it came with a lot of like panic and like not sleeping and yeah, so much late. Yeah, yeah. So like um I didn't like the essays and. Yeah, so I wanted to drop out, but like... So what this book I'm reading will tell you is that uh, it's because they weren't motivating you correctly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so like I if want- you have motivation to do the work, you don't procrastinate yes. as much. Yeah. Anyway. Exactly. So, But I was too scared to say, because my mother's paid the like, first well, yeah, step, second Well, yeah, I understand year. that. But. So I was like, let me just get through this. But the more... Can I get through this? <laughs> I gotta get it done. But the more I stayed, the more like... You found joy in it? No. No, you hated it more. Yeah, I hated it. I hated myself in it more. Oh, wow. I almost started to feel like performance wasn't the thing because it it started to get like, yeah, it was a problematic space. Like There were like lectures praying on students. Like in in any performance. Oh, UKZN? That's never happened (laughs) before. I don't know anyone who's ever dated a lecturer at fucking UKZN. He said very sarcastically. Yeah, and... Again, a lot of, like, bullying. Like, the, there was one lecturer who'd, like... I don't know whether he thought he was Lee Strasberg, but, like, he'd like to break you Who's down. Lee Strasberg? Lee Strasberg is that guy who who sort of... They say he broke Marilyn Monroe down by, like, drawing on her emotional trauma. And, okay. like, picking on her so that she could... I don't know, break open emotionally. Oh, yeah, because so. she delivered such great acting performances. <laughs> People say she's really good in, in Some Like It Hot. Yeah, she is. Like, uh, But that's not her playing... Like, that's her playing a comedic character. Mm. Like, it's great. Like, yeah. No, she's really funny. Like, yeah. But that's also... Billy Wilder's just a great fucking writer. And People like, say, like, some... Because apparently Some Like It Hot is so well written, it's still, like... Yeah. No, but all of his stuff yeah. is... Like, he wrote The Apartment. He wrote, I think, Sunset Boulevard. And then maybe he didn't do Sunset Boulevard. I can't remember. But maybe he did. Uh, but I know he did The Apartment. I know he did, like, Some yeah. Like It Hot. I love Billy Wilder. Like, fucking amazing fucking writer yeah. and director, yeah. Because I actually... I do want to watch... Some like it hot because like it's funny. Yeah, it's, I, it's, it holds up. Like it's funny. Yeah, because 
I listen to this podcast called Films to be Buried With, where people <laughs> people talk about what films they like. And that one comes up often. That's as funny because like I funny... might be starting a podcast, not like with the same concept, essentially, just like uh, chatting to people about like their favorite movies or movies they want to discuss yeah. or whatever. So anyway, I'll listen to that and steal some, <laughs> <laughs> steal some stuff. I'll send you one of my favorite epi- like episodes where they do like the their favorite for that year because there's some good recommendations in it when it's so funny when someone asks you what's your favorite film you you go blank a little bit i know it's like uh, almost famous like probably is just the the one that like sticks there almost famous is a great film yeah it's just been very influential in my life so that's why like i'm sure there's lots of other movies that like i probably like more at this point but that's just like the nostalgic comfort like that and like high fidelity and that. So like just movies that like I'm like, yeah, they're always gonna make my top five list of like sentimental like yeah. classics essentially. Like sure I've seen better movies since, but you know. Like, yeah, those ones are like there's one question in that podcast is like, what's a film that you remember having a great experience to? And like the one film I remember like white chicks <laughs> I mean like 13. And I feel like I never I've never laughed that hard. Before. I've never watched it again because I didn't want to. You don't want to ruin yeah, it. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to ruin it. That's like, it. I don't want to watch that again now. Like, yeah. I'm like, fuck. The it's, Wayne's Brothers, like, going back to him. Because I watched, like, um, Don't Be a Menace to South Central Whilst Drinking Your Juice in the Hood. Like, <laughs> and, like, there's some bits. There's some good bits. But there's also your, there's some problematic shit. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So I don't want my, my brain to, like, start critiquing. It yeah. just wants to Have that remain, pure memory. Yeah. That 13 year old that loved it so much. <laughs> what a beautiful chocolate man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. It's tricky to rock around with it. <laughs> <laughs> There's that one scene where the, the girl uh, is like freaking out because her jeans won't fit. And then I don't know whether it's Marlon or Sean, but they're like, I'll go get help. Dr. Phil! <laughs> so dumb, but it's still so funny. <laughs> oh, okay, so university. All right, okay. <laughs> we, so we'll, We're going to like tell the story of your life through all these like little... <laughs> little side side pieces. Little... F- oh, I was going to say Funyuns, but it wasn't. It's Yangyuns. Yangyuns. <laughs> Yangyuns. <laughs> but... Um, Yangyuns Funyuns. Yangyuns Funyuns. But so I didn't want to study there. I was getting like despondent. Um, and I still didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't. How long have we been talking? Not long. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. Uh, you can't see it, guys, but he's raising his eyebrows in a very suggestive way. <laughs> no, it's just, I mean, it is like, I, I didn't even notice this because like it's been such a dope conversation. But yeah, this is a bit longer, but it's cool. We can chat. Like we've got time. I mean, oh, I've got time. We'll cut it, and... cut it in half so no one will hear my vulnerable portions. <laughs> no, we'll do a two-parter. <laughs> Come back next week to find <laughs> out on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I used to love Dragon Ball Z with the, the countdown that would always take so slow. Like he's oh, gonna yeah. blow up <laughs> 10, 9, and the next week is like 9, 8. <laughs> it was literally like that one episode of like Gohan like going Super Saiyan. They're like, oh, it was like trunks or whatever. Like that took like three fucking episodes. Like the one battle like was like, yo, that was crazy shit. But we are talking. About university and uh, how it right. sucked for you because you had lecturers, lecturers. <laughs> yeah, they were they were like in their own stuff, but they were they were complex people. There was a good side and there was like sure. the, yeah. So yeah, didn't, academics are no. <laughs> yeah, academics are so. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I didn't want to study, but I also didn't know what I wanted to do. I came to the end where I was like. What career am I going to go into? And I, I just wanted to like roll around and find my way. But my mother was not having not it. Yeah. So she pushed me to do my master's. Oh, God. I know. And what did you do your master's in? <laughs> in drama. Oh, so God. Yeah. So then I, I did well, that. What was it on? What did you write on? On comedy cool but what what stand-up oh, comedy so, yeah but what specifically so i i wrote so i didn't know what i was gonna do but there were, i saw a dissertation of women in stand-up comedy and i was like oh, i'll do that because i have to do a prac yeah so i wrote like a one-woman show okay uh 
it was sort of like because of the space, I made it sort of like theatery. Sure, more like Bo Burnham. Yeah, like more Bo Burnham. Much like Bo Burnham. Yeah, 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 because it was such a small space, but it was like a one-woman show, and there was this director that tagged himself on that was like very much he. He liked to, he was one of those people who liked to bully young actors, yeah. you know, like. But it's also like having like a male director for that kind of thing, maybe not necessarily like yeah. the best thing. <laughs> he tagged himself on because I actually, my friend was busy at that time. I wanted my friend to do it. And then like, I never, that's a sad thing is like, I never, at that time, I didn't like look at myself like, hey, I did this. Maybe I should pursue comedy i always thought like like if these people didn't come on i wouldn't have i didn't recognize it as something that was possible yeah possible it's like i did it because i had to get this degree i didn't like think this is a future this is a future or even like but how did it feel actually doing it though like did you like when you did it did you think like oh this is fun maybe or would you hate it (laughs) I I thought it was, I love, in general, like, as a person, I love making people laugh. Yeah. Like, I try to make someone laugh every day, even if I'm not on stage. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, if someone smiles or laughs, I'm like, yes. Victory. Victory. They like <laughs> yeah, me. I like it. They like yeah. me. Not my jokes. <laughs> they, they like, like me. They, like, they love me. <laughs> so, like, yeah. So, it was nice to make people laugh. And, um... I suppose I didn't like it because it was Bob Burnham y, so and a bit vulnerable because it was more about my personal choices. As one person shows tend to be. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But if it had been like maybe like a regular stand up with like a mic and th- I might have felt more like, hey, yo, I love this. Let me keep doing it. So I, I stayed with that director and thought like, okay, maybe if someone in the industry sees me, they'll give me an opportunity <laughs> to act. So like I, I went with him to the Graham Sound Festival 2014. Well, did you do it? Yeah, I did. I did. Oh, wow. Do it so you should, you've like, like you've done something, like, something that was on my to-do list, but they rejected me last year. And I'm just like, well, then fuck you. <laughs> like, fuck you forever. I'm never going to the fucking festival. Like... But what, wasn't the the festival still like on distance? Like they've put it online now, or it's, it's just back to it's normal? It's back to normalish. Yeah, I know there was limited space and stuff like that. But like, come on, man! I've been doing comedy for like fourteen fucking years. This is like my second like one man show. Like try. it's relevant. No, like I'm not gonna do it again. Oh, well, no, try the Hilton. Oh, they're Ooh. definitely not gonna fucking book me. I've been critical of them in the past because oh. it's the same fucking white bread fucking nonsense always. It's like, always and that's also why they more. won't. Yeah, yeah, that's they, the thing. They won't book me because I tell jokes about fucking wanting to kill myself <laughs> and like. Oh yeah, they want like like family fluff. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Like it's just shitty. Like, um, yeah. Like I don't want to fucking do the Hilton Arts Festival mm. anyway. I want us to create our own, like, that's also, that's our boys created, like, all these other but spaces. But you should be so proud of yourself, because you created your own festival, like. Yeah, but, you know, like. Heat City. Yeah, but things got very annoying because of fucking dealing with, you know, Durban comedians. So, there's aspects to it, like, I'm proud of myself for, like, trying and doing stuff on that, but, like. I do still have a lot of resentment. You were on E! News. You made it. <laughs> like, you did. I was on, like, SABC 2, like, the like on the afternoon show once for Temp and Bowling. <laughs> <laughs> when I was, like, 12 please, years old. Oh, please tell me. What were you doing with Temp and Bowling that you oh, got on the I used to play Temp and Bowling. Like, my mom, like, made the South African team and stuff, but, like, she didn't have money to go overseas. And, like, like yeah, like, my mom was a Temp and Bowler, and so... I, yeah, it was a Tim and Boiler when I was younger. Oh my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why I've got the boiling pin in my lounge. That's from Disc Bowl, like, because I also, my mom used to work there and stuff. So I used to go chill, like, at the back with Is the mechanics the, with the machines. what that place was called with the putt putt and Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, Disc Bowl. Disc, I never knew what it was called, but I was always like, um, I used to love that place with the arcades and the, like, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, why doesn't it? exist anymore because it's such uh, a draw well because the guy stan kaminsky like he sold it he was well i actually think maybe by that time it was his son his son was moving to joburg guy kaminsky owns bowling alleys up in joburg like they oh, partnered with oh. Funland and stuff and like 
So I think also Gateway is theirs, or maybe they sold it off or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, like it's a family. Because it was business. such a, it was such a great location. He's actually it was someone very, I should yeah. maybe chat to. Very yeah, it was a yeah. great location, and it's so my mom used to work there and that, and so like I used to go to the beach and skateboard, yeah. and then I'd go ice like I played ice hockey and stuff because like yeah, I'd go ice skate and it yeah, was all in that all it in was that area. So it was dope. dope. Yeah. Like yeah, I I enjoyed that yeah. <laughs> period. And, and the drive-in was just like down the down road. The road. There. Yep. Yeah, yeah. By, uh, it was... George Campbell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good times. <laughs> yeah, we're like old, old time. And now people. I just sit at home and play GTA Five. <laughs> like it's what, GTA Five. Yeah, because the the trailer for Six came out, and then I was like, I haven't played that in a while. Like I was like, I was trying to remember. And I was like, GTA oh, like like acronym for something. Like... Oh, Grand Theft Auto. Oh, okay, okay. Now I'm with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I was like, cool. Let me. And, like, it was funny because I had it in my Epic Games account for ages, you know, when it was yeah. free back in the day. I got it. And so, I like, I've downloaded it now because, like, I've played The Sims. I've been playing, like, all these games where, like, you can actually get some progression in your life, mm. you know, where it's like, oh, I've achieved something because <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I can't get it in real life. <laughs> like, but it's also good, great, like, in a weird way, business strategy and <laughs> what you learn and what you, like collect and stuff like that do you collect things in grand theft order i mean yeah other people's cars yes <laughs> but there's like a business strategy that, that happens with with gaming no that's a th- like yeah that's the thing like what gaming teaches you is hey if you just carry on doing things like things will probably work out yeah but that's a lie <laughs> <laughs> it's just a game system that's not real life <laughs> like sometimes you can put a lot of work into things and Go nowhere. I used to love. I don't. I'm not a big gamer, but like growing up, I really loved Worms Armageddon. Oh fuck yes! <laughs> like, <laughs> I just remember Worms Armageddon and The Sims. Yeah, Worm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> those are classics. Like, but Worms Armageddon was a lot of fun with friends. Yeah, like, I remember playing on the computer. You know, like yeah. <laughs> Did you did you have TV games? Yes, I had TV games. I had, had the like 24. the family con like yes, thing. Yeah, yes, with the five hundred and one cartridges. The oh, yeah, I had the twenty four and one, the one with Contra. Yes, and, and Super Mario Nuts. Brothers and yeah, yeah, yeah. Donkey Kong and the Bicycle Boy. I don't yes. know if that's what it was called, but Paper Boy. Back. Oh, Paper yeah, Boy. Yeah. But Paper Boy was that was Sega, wasn't it? Or no, was that on the NES? Yeah, it was on the Super Nintendo. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. It was a great cartridge, but it, it what it had was Contra, uh, Paper Boy, Milk and Nuts, the elevator had, thing. Yes, the elevator shoot. action or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then you had Flappy or whatever, yeah, like the with the, the bird. circus. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. circus Charlie. Yeah. Fucking... <laughs> I still remember the. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because like I had TV games and that was it. Like my friends, like over the years, would get like a Sega and then like a PlayStation, and there's me with my TV games until yeah. eventually I was sixteen and my mom bought a computer for me, which I'll forever be eternally grateful for. Yeah, and then eventually the TVs didn't come with the. Uh, RCAs, okay. yeah, yeah. The, oh, 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 that. Well, that was a different the VGA, the, like yeah, thing. Yeah, the cable or whatever that you could plug in. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think you should just dub this this talk like two millennials talking. <laughs> 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 uh, pretty accurate. <laughs> um, okay, so then you did your masters and all of that. You tried comedy a bit you yeah and so then you traveled to grahamstown which is yeah yeah. and then i worked at the catalina theater for a short time Oh, that was dope when it existed yeah but i worked towards the end of the catalina theater okay so not as dope not (laughs) as dope so it was it was really on its last legs of existence like uh but they had an open mic gig there and then i did five minutes and I won those five minutes and they took my number, but they oh, never called. Oh, it was called. a competition. Yeah, yeah. But it was like, literally, like, there there was the comedians and maybe the judges. There were like eight people in the audience that, that night. That right. Yeah. But like, I, yeah. They, these two, it was Darren, Daryl, blonde guy with a beard. Darren, Darren. Oh, uh, I think Dar- Darren. Daryl. Like, no, so it was Darren, Daryl. Daryl. I think it was a no, Daryl. No, Daryl's the color guy. There was no oh, white oh. Daryl, I don't think. So it's was probably it? Darren. 
I think there was a I can't remember Darren Cock probably. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. white guy. He had a coffee shop in town. I think I know who you're talking with about. Demetrius. It's like with the beard and the long <laughs> yeah, hair yeah, and yeah. The, being a coffee yeah. guy. His name's yeah, Dylan. Yes. Yeah. He he was gonna. He took my number and said yeah, he was he gonna w- call me. For yeah, kids. they were doing the O three one Entertainment yeah. Co or something. Yeah, with Aaron. And they never called. And then I thought, like, okay, maybe it's a sign that I'm not meant for this. And so, like, you I, give up a little too easily. I do. I I just think of everything as like a sign. I mean, like, I get it too. Like I just said, like I'm never gonna fucking apply to them. <laughs> like, like you reject me once, or you like, you know, you don't answer a text. I'm like, yeah. cool, fuck you forever. Even though, I like, you know, I sometimes don't answer stuff, yeah. and like, I'm like, ah, I wasn't personal. But at the same time, it was also like I was looking too much for it from the external. It yes. wasn't coming from me saying. I well, that's the thing. If you have the drive, yeah, like yeah. you're going to, I wasn't find ways sure. To do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was also a bit of me not having like the cl- the clarity or like the drive, the purpose, or the, the purpose. <laughs> <laughs> clarity of purpose, full circle. Yeah, on the- <laughs> that's it. You know, it's called a callback, people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's how you that's how you tie everything together in a stand up set. Like you're joking me shit, but if you start with something and then you end with the same thing, the crowd will love you. Yeah. Anyway. So we're just gonna end the podcast right there. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Check you later, youngins. <laughs> As you're saying. As like, I say so, oh yeah, so because it wasn't coming from you, this clarity, it was always like Oh, if they put me on, it's meant to be, and then I'll do that thing. Yeah. So then, because they didn't put me on, I was like, maybe I'm not meant to do this thing. I've definitely felt <laughs> similarly to you about things, yeah. Yeah. So then I I started to try get work, and then I worked like at an after, and then I got a contract at UKZN. Uh, so I was always like dabbling creatively, like because like I had to direct students and plays and things like that there was always like some creative outlets creative work going on there was never a time in my life that that ever stopped because the other bad thing is like closing the door on your creativity it sort of like slaps you back (laughs) after i closed that door like like i i felt like i didn't want to perform anymore i felt like it was painful i felt like i couldn't do it I, s- I made bad decisions. I got into ter- I got into a terribly codependent, awful relationship, and I stayed there for way too long. I went to the Mari Stokes Clinic twice, <laughs> <laughs> three me one, times. Shame on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was like uh, bad choices and like uh, yeah, uh, just as in a bleh time. And that's the other thing that sort of comes up in like when when you outlive your loved ones a little bit is like you think of all the time you wasted making bad decisions. Oh God, the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Instead of like, you know, enjoying their company. It's like, I think Nick Cave wrote something about like how... He wrote on a few things. Yeah, yeah. He, but he, he wrote very like poignantly. Ab- I don't know if the word's poignantly, but like... Poignant. Poignant. I don't poignantly. know. Either. Fuck the French, <laughs> like, man. <laughs> about like grief. I think because he lost his son. About how like... Yeah, that's this, heavy to deal with. Yeah. The space where someone was becomes sort of like highlighted in a really weird way. Where, oh, yeah. You yeah. feel the absence. Yeah, you feel the absence. But also it's like... If they were there listening to their favorite song, you wouldn't like pay much mind to it. But when they're not there and you hear their favorite song, it's like yeah, yeah, it's that sort of like that sort of like super presence. They become a super being in the the memory. How did we get here? What was I even talking about? All oh, right, yeah, wasting, <laughs> wasting time. time. <laughs> Yes, wasting time. So, yeah, so I wasted a lot of my time. (laughs) And then the pandemic, I'm not sure if I'm skipping a few years, but the pandemic, at the time, my contract was over, so I had no employment. And I started listening to the self-help podcast, and I was indoors. And one of the self-help things I read, I think, said, like, to find out what you should do, draw a timeline of your life. 
and like on the top, sort of like a ruler. So on the top, you put the good memories. The bottom, you put your bad memories. And then when I did the timeline thing, I'm like, it felt like it was stand up because the thing that the good memories I had was like, in school, when I used to do orals. Yeah. Making people laugh. Yeah, making people laugh. I won that Toastmasters competition and oh, nice. it was funny at school in grade 11. So that was on the timeline. And then I was like, oh, when I put it on the timeline, I'm like, oh, shit, maybe. So, But then it was like middle of lockdown. And I was like, well, this is nice, this revelation where... We can't really perform anywhere. <laughs> Everything's closed now. But that's that's when the realization came. So it came very late. And I also started watching stand-up specials very late in life. I feel like I only started watching full specials. Uh, well, there were some, like my cousin showed me some in 2006. I saw Russell Peters. Oh, yeah, that was a big influence yeah, for you. Yeah, and I saw... Um, Obviously, Trevor Noah, all his specials, because he became so big. I'd watch Trevor Noah's specials. But, like, I really only watched, like, comedians' specials in lockdown. Okay. And, yeah, and I began to feel motivated to maybe try stand-up. Because it, it felt like, when I did that timeline thing of, like, Good memories and bad. I was like, oh. But then you went and did open mics or whatever, or you did yeah. a open mic. Or like, no, yeah. yours was the first one I oh, saw. Oh, so was it before? So the Dylan thing was the only other time you tried yeah. to perform. Oh, D so it was Dylan in 2014, and then okay. maybe six months after that. Um, oh wow, that was a long time ago. The, yeah, but that was a long time yeah. ago. The Dingalings uh, called yeah. me to do like a stand-up set at That's Sabaya. Cool. So I did that. That's dope. Yeah, that was dope. But even then, I was like, I was like, no. I went, yeah, I, I didn't. You in a weird space, yeah. Yeah. But I thought you had done, because you said like you had been in like the comedy WhatsApp group here and you were just like, oh, oh yes. fuck, let me bear bounce. So um, after that Sabaya performance, there was a comedian Shabnam. Car. Oh yeah, yeah. She she added me to the group and she said, you know, like come come to open mics, come to Amsterdam. And I was like, at the time, I was dating someone who was at Amsterdam a lot. So I was like, <laughs> no, no, I didn't want to be seen. But she was very like, you know, like, come. So she added me to the group. So I was on the comedy group, but I was like, oh, my God, these comedians were always fighting on yeah. the group. I didn't say one word on that group, but like the messages were always like, yo, these people got beef. <laughs> yeah, the, that's yeah. The, ugh. Anyway, <laughs> that that. So that's the thing. It must have looked like pretty unappealing at that point. Well, like I said, I didn't know, or I had not made the connection, or like the the impetus wasn't coming from the in inside. The call, the call yeah. was not coming from inside so, the house. Yeah, yeah, it was coming from from like oh External somebody put yeah. me on, and then I'll know what to do. I I just felt like a person that didn't know what I wanted to do. And that included comedy. The realization, as I said, it only came in 2020, the realization. Like, very late in the game. And then, like, and I only did the that open mic, like, two years later. Like, because I only started getting back on stage after the pandemic. I was like, I'm not fucking performing. Like, No, no, no. It, I think you put it on um, 2021, October. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was once we could all, yeah, like, yeah, do yeah. things. And it was outside and, like, yeah, I was very, like, Yeah, yeah. I still conscious. remember, yeah, the weather, it was raining that day. It started, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, it was a shit gig, like, I'll be honest. But it was the start of something special. It was the start of something special because you were, like, the first person who actually, like... Hit you up afterwards. Yeah, hit and was me like, up afterwards and gave me opportunities and, like... No, because I saw, yeah. like, you were funny and you were keen. So that, to me, made sense. Like... It's very simple for me, like to put people on. I'm like, okay, you're funny, cool, good. You seem committed and want to do this thing, dope, and you're not a cunt. Like, <laughs> that's not it. yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sheesh, we'll see how much of a monster you become, like as you get more successful. I don't know. <laughs> like, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, how's the journey been since then? It's been great. Like, I will say, like, last 
no, 2022. I have to get used to thinking that last year is no, not I've, yeah. But I also thought all of 20, like I thought those two years were one year yeah. anyway. Like it but, felt like one year. <laughs> yeah. But I could manage in 2022 because we'd mainly have like gigs once or twice a month. Yeah, we I was uh, yeah. basically just doing stump nose at that yeah, time. Yeah, stump nose at that time, and I could I could manage with that. And then like this year was also great because it was nice to perform more often. But then me being me, I couldn't. I started to like not be able to balance, and then like because you said work and everything. Yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing with work is like. In the office, I wouldn't get much work done because I'm like a chatterbox. Like, I like talking to people. So then I'd bring my work home and it would take long and then it would cut into what yeah. whatever creative stuff I wanted to do. So, like, things were falling off the wheels a little bit, but there was also, like, a lot of stuff that started to surface September time. Uh, around grief. And, around yeah. grief and stuff. I think... I think I got COVID. I didn't take a test, but like... I just assume and, all flu is COVID yeah, at this point. I hadn't had a flu like that, but it it was like that physical ailment triggered all this emotional stuff, like that fatigue and like that... And yeah, also yeah. just remembering like those like two, year, two to three years of like basically just being stuck inside. Well, like the one year of being stuck inside. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. So it that like... It was like this fatigue that I couldn't like shake off no matter what I did. And like it started to make me sort of emotionally numb. Like I couldn't cry. If I was upset, I couldn't I couldn't cry for like a good two months, which is it like it was bothersome. I tried to watch movies to make myself like just to get the feelings out of me. <laughs> but it was like stuck. And then having it stuck, it like it made everything else like I want to say like sepia toned. Sure. Yeah. Like, um, it sounds like depression. <laughs> yeah, it does. Doesn't it, children? <laughs> Be mad. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, and then I, it was also like my own stuff that I realized I needed to sort out because I still had this thing of like, everybody hates me. I don't belong here. I'm I mean, somewhere. that's yeah. my <laughs> standard way I wake up. Yeah. Like, it's oh my God, that fucking edible was the worst thing I've ever had in my life. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, but also like you just had the whole fucking thing like... I hadn't... I used to smoke was, I, a yeah, lot of weed. Like, like I gave comedy an edible... Like and she died. She thought she was a horse. Like both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because like that shit doesn't even touch sides for me. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I. But when I Google people, yeah, like and ne- yeah, edibles can be a thing. Like they can fuck you up. Like yeah, they're drugs sometimes. You know. They fuck because I haven't smoked weed in a long time. I haven't like it. Yeah, I, I didn't try an edible before, but it was like, oh my god. <laughs> So did that also like what did that do? Did that, that, like, that was put like, you in a dark space, or I was just like, oh, because we were watching the. That's the when it started, and then I I started to think of all the people who were not around to celebrate. Oh fuck! And then like um, started thinking about that, and I was it was like things like you should have you should have killed yourself when you had the chance, like sort of. <laughs> okay, so we're not giving you any more edibles, fuck. <laughs> And like it was just like dark, and then after that, I was like, maybe, maybe I shouldn't, I should step away for a little bit. Oh sure, okay. that, yeah. so that was the impetus. For yeah, it was taking uh, a bit of a break. Yeah, so hey, breaks are good. Breaks are breaks are good, and I feel like my intention is gonna is to come back stronger. It's not like leaving forever. I'm not closing the door. I just want to be like sure what's the word like unshakable in my own spirit where it's like bad day or good day i like doing this this is what i want to express i hope you like it sort of thing as opposed to going there like please like me please like me please think i'm the best (laughs) i mean which is why a lot of comedians stagnates actually like i've seen it a lot you know like you get comedians never trying new shirts never really like you know, pushing the boundaries because they are just too caught up in, please like me. And they get people to like them. They develop jokes that, yeah. like, you know, audiences love. 
but like it's like it's empty and like yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the thing the whole like i hope you like me is way better than please like me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes it's a huge difference and that's that's the other thing i wanted to say is like like comedy is profoundly about like language like mm -hmm. when when people say oh we can't say anything anymore it's like no you learn ethical boundaries as you go you learn like it's not okay to say these things and yeah, People, I mean, it's called I mean, benign violation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, what, what, what does it give you to like mock someone who's fat? Like, but it's why? also like, yeah. I mean, there's way like, I don't think fat jokes. Or, like, I don't think like I think you know, especially with roasts and stuff like that. There's ways to have fun with it. You know, there's yeah, also yeah, yeah. because we all are weird and ugly and fucking whatever, you know? Like, there's what? parts of the body that, the like... eye contact when you said we're <laughs> ugly. I was thinking about myself, but anyway. Like, um, you know, like, I think there's lots of space to explore with all of this. And for me, like, I actually think Anthony Jeselnik put it perfectly. Mm -hmm. He said, comedy is what you can get away with. If you don't get away with it, you didn't do a good job. Yeah. Like, yes. Because like he's, him, Daniel Tosh... Guys like Doug Stanhope. Doug Stanhope has a joke about fucking a baby with 47 vaginas. Like, because it's the premise is so, you know, like, it's not possible. Yeah, yeah. What are you getting upset at? You know, yeah, it's yeah. like the whole thing. So that's the thing. There's so many people who actually do genuinely push boundaries and do say yeah. risky, offensive things. Whereas these other guys are just going like the tried and true, saying the exact same shit all the other fucking guys are saying and yeah. making money off of because there's a gullible audience who's scared of the world changing and buy into it. Yeah, and it's it's like like with roast, it's different. Like like when it's roasts are actually really nice because when when it's like seeing two friends who like care about each other like take each other down. So it's exactly. like it's That's enjoyable. What I'm like, yeah. You know, like. When you've got friends and stuff and you've got, like, a cool relationship, you can be like, oh, you fat fuck. Yeah, like, yeah, you know? that's, that's the difference. But, like, to just, in general, mock people for what they choose to do with their bodies or whatever, it's, like, it's getting boring. Like, stop being so boring about it. <laughs> it's, like, can we move on? Is in the, This universe is so big. That's the thing. Said, There's so uh, much shit to write joy, jokes yeah. about and you want to just write the same yeah. joke as everyone else. Cause you, it's like you, I identify as an Apache helicopter. Yeah. Cool, dude. Like, wow. Like, that's so Funny. original. Yeah, yeah. I identify as a shirt. Ha, ha. So, yeah. it's like... Pally. It's the one joke. Yeah, like that they yeah. Say. It's going back to, like, they're basically trying to argue to be eight-year-olds. Like, eight-year-olds <laughs> are not good at writing jokes. Why? It's like, you just want to say... Yeah. yeah. It's... What? Anyway. Like, th thankfully, there is other dope comedy out there, and we don't actually have to, like, watch any other shit, really. It's a big universe. <laughs> Full circle. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> you know, I was just going to be like, yeah, big universe. Created by God! <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to God who sponsored the sports podcast. <laughs> follow him on... <laughs> no, you got to follow Jesus. We don't follow God. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light, and only through Him can you gather. In I can't remember the exact thing. Yeah, I used to be a Christian. I know I've got my matric and Bible studies. Like, hence I, why I'm an atheist. <laughs> like, I love the 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 memes that come out recently about like Jesus being so salty, where he's like invites all his friends to dinner just to say <laughs> one of you will betray me. <laughs> Yeah, that is drop like that is <laughs> where there's a, I think there's a skit where someone makes him like a desperate house not desperate housewife real housewife oh, of Atlanta wow. type of thing like that Judas <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> doesn't know that I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna talk to my dad in the garden. Bye guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love um not Jesus Christ Superstar, which is also dope. Uh, the Last Temptation of Christ. Have you ever oh, watched Martin that? Oh, Martin Scorsese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't watched. Oh it. my god, it's such a good fucking film. Like, is it? Yeah, it's amazing. Like he Willem said... Dafoe is like fucking awesome as Jesus, and like Willem Dafoe is Jesus. <laughs> yes. Holy shit! I need to watch. And it really well. just explores like what it would be like to actually have been Jesus at that time, and like mm. you know, it's fucking amazing. But anyway, he said he's making another one. 
Oh, wow. Sequel. That's his next film is another... Dope. Yeah. It would be cool to see what he thinks these days. Um, okay. I have no idea how long we've done. It's definitely been long. So we're going to end with me asking you, what is a big mistake that you've learned an important lesson from? Um, the big mistake I've learned from is um, self betrayal or like sometimes uh, I've learned that sometimes the biggest thing in in your way is like your own thoughts like mm-hmm. sometimes yeah so that's that's another thing I've learned is like the biggest fuck ups can sometimes not be because of what anyone else is doing it can sometimes just be you can only control your own reactions to things yep. and your your own personhood and so maybe Focus on being the master of that so that you can walk into any situation a and little stronger. Yeah, and flappable. Of course, this this is not a universal experience. I'm just saying that's for me what I've yeah, learned. Well, I was asking you specifically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to be unflappable. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, that's it. I was going to say, uh, where can people follow you? But they can't because you, oh, you're I'm, not I'm on social media. Eventually, <laughs> I'll, I'll get there. I'm going to be there soon. I mean, yeah. I don't even know a, how important other, it is. Yeah. The other problem was like the hiding thing. Like, why am I so afraid to be seen? Sort of. Yeah. I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much. I'll be along for the journey, I think. It'll be fun yeah, seeing you. Yeah, of course, Thelma. <laughs> you're the best right to the bitter end oh, yeah, right to the end <laughs> uh, but cool thank you so much this has been fucking great this has been really thank fun you. <laughs> thank you I also had fun I was, I was nervous cool. were you nervous before <laughs> speaking on the mic that's that's new <laughs> that's so new <laughs> so that was comedy I told you she's hilarious I told you yeah, I had so much fun having that chat. That was yo, that was invigorating. It was dope. It was so much fun. So I hope you enjoyed that too. A uh, one thing listening back, I did want to kind of mention a little bit about was the data privacy thing that we chatted about in the beginning because I don't know necessarily if I gave like a great explanation for why I'm a privacy advocate. I don't even know if I'm still going to give a great explanation now, but I figure I'll talk about some of the ideas that like bug me with it um you know the more data people have on you the more they can control you and a lot of our data is sold by third-party platforms to each other so that's the reason why you will get all these spam sms's while you'll get all these spam emails and that stuff you didn't even sign up to because some data broker somewhere has a file with your name and everything you've ever done on the internet that they can track and you know they sell that shit to each other and that to me is pretty fucking whack that people are making money off of your private data it's also we just have a right to fucking privacy like we have a right to like that's just a fundamental fucking human right to not have everything that we do tracked to not have everything that we you know look at on the internet put into a network that or a data set (laughs) that determines what kind of person you are and what you're likely to buy and be interested in. And that stuff also leads to being siloed off into ideological bubbles. Uh, A lot of the time, you know, the internet these days with its algorithms and with its tracking what you like and all of that, uh, will just keep feeding you stuff that you already agree with stuff that's either that or stuff that will trigger you that's that's the other thing i mean that's with like threads i don't know if you guys it's one of the reasons why i'm no longer on fucking instagram to be completely honest with you it's why i deleted that shit off my phone because i was getting triggered by the little threads things that were like popping up you know at the top of your instagram feed and i was just like you know wanting to respond because i was like no this fucking idiot and that's also another way that, uh, yeah, the internet can manipulate you or these people can manipulate you with your data because they know the trigger points that you have. And I mean, I think if we look at stuff like the US elections in 2016, I think it was 2016 when Trump got elected. And, you know, we look at how a lot of the targets are advertising there and a lot of the, you know, the news feed stuff, how 
people got radicalized just because they were susceptible to it and they were fed that stuff and those are just like i mean i could talk about this for ages and maybe one day i will but i mean i'm sure you can also just do some research yourself but just in general man fuck the man like that's that's my general <laughs> um position on most things and the man is collecting data on you and is using it to manipulate you and so that's uh some of my issues that i have with a lot of the data privacy stuff that we have i mean i know i'm a bit of a hypocrite by using stuff like google news especially on my phone but when i'm you know i don't use chrome i use vivaldi which is based on chromium but still it's a privacy focused uh internet browser that you can have on your phone and on your computer and it's also just hella useful in that you can if you're like me, you know, like I have got my emails and everything set up through it and that. It's a all-in-one web browser, kind of like how web browsers used to be back in the day. But yeah, I utilize that. Obviously, I'm still on YouTube and stuff, and that tracks you and that uh, tries to feed you more of <laughs> what you like. And that is uh, that is a tricky thing sometimes. But you know, as much as I can, as much as I can, I try to be somewhat privacy focused but it's a fucking struggle these days and especially when you're someone like me who's a relatively public figure i guess you know i'm trying to put stuff out into the world and i mean hell i share so much on here anyway but thankfully you know it's a relatively small group of people who are <laughs> listening to this so not too many people are privy to like my deepest darkest thoughts it's actually funny because like Vinny, who I recently interviewed, Vincent Joseph, um, he was like the last episode the other day. He was just like, I still can't believe you, you know, you've been in Durban the whole time. Like everyone thought you were in Joburg, like after the Heat City Comedy Festival and during the pandemic and stuff, because no one in the comedy scene saw me. And I was like, all you would have to do to know where I am is listen to the podcast or just check out my Instagram. Like, there was a period where, like, you know, I was sharing everything in the fucking stories, you know? So, it's good to know that my haters, my detractors, aren't doing that. So, that's that's kind of nice. It's good to know that uh, most of the people who listen to me or who follow me online uh, don't have ill intentions. <laughs> Probably. Probably. Who fucking knows? But... Yeah, so, th so that's that. And then the other thing I wanted to chat a bit about is the whole dry January thing. Because, you know, I do recognize that, yeah, I'm probably a bit of an addict when it comes to certain things like booze and weed and stuff like that. And I'm not someone who subscribes to the Alcoholics Anonymous um, ideologies. Like, I'm grateful that it's helped some of my friends and that. And I'm grateful that there are people out there who do find solace in it and do find the 12 steps to work for them in that. Personally, I don't fuck with the idea that I'm helpless. That, um, you know, like, I get the disease idea and model of all of it and that. But, like, personally, yeah, like, I don't think that complete abstinence is ever a good thing i don't think i think moderation is key i think balance is fucking key and obviously the problem with addiction is that it doesn't necessarily allow you to find balance but that's going to be my like plan for the year or my goal for the year or my task my project that's the word i'm looking for is to try and find a balance with things because i mean i feel like with weed and stuff i've i've cut way down on how much i used to smoke i mean i'm smoking way more cigarettes uh which was a thing i had quit for a while but you know it, it ebbs and flows with all this shit and so who knows man maybe maybe i'll find a way to find balance with stuff because yeah there were periods last year where i definitely was just drinking too much too often and it doesn't ruin my life the way i think it does with some other people but at the same time, it definitely can hinder you, you know, like, like your ginger mahal. <laughs> Don't hinder ginger, man. Don't hinder ginger. But yeah, like I, maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe you are just hopeless to addiction. Maybe, maybe. But 
I think a lot of it has to do with internal um, issues with myself and, you know, the world around me. And sometimes it is easier to have a drink than to sit with your thoughts. Like it is easier to drink and be merry than it is to not drink and be morose. But I know certain patterns in my life are going to keep repeating if I don't actually tackle some of my issues head on. If I don't actually sit with them, if I don't actually confront them. Like, sometimes it's important to gaze into the abyss and let the abyss gaze back into you. Of course, you've got to take Nietzsche's uh, advice at the beginning of that quote, uh, where he says, Beware when you battle with monsters, lest you become a monster yourself. Paraphrasing a little bit there, but you know the vibe. Uh, because, yeah sometimes when you are fighting things sometimes when you're gazing into things they can overtake you and it's good to have a strong sense of self and it's good to just be aware of uh, how things affect you and how things impact you but it doesn't mean don't gaze into the abyss it doesn't mean don't fight those monsters it's just the key is to try and hold on to yourself within that and come out stronger for it so yeah we'll see how this journey fucking goes man like maybe like i said maybe i'm completely wrong maybe there will be a period maybe this year or in the future where i do become a teetotaler but for now we're seeking balance okay that's that's the fucking goal for this year is uh, to find some balance so yeah also by the way this isn't advice for anyone else this isn't me like maybe you might relate to some of this or whatever but i'm not telling anyone else like hey if you're an alcoholic you know you don't need to not drink ever because i know like some people have real fucking problems where one drink becomes you know fucking three bags of coke and some fucking terrible decisions like as the night goes on and then maybe not even just the night maybe it's months at a time where yeah people lose their lives to various substances and that so i'm i'm aware of that and i understand that for some people abstinence is key but to me like it's just not how i want to live life but as I say, I'm open to the idea that I, I, I may be wrong. and <laughs> But at the same time, even stuff like Alcoholics Anonymous only works for a certain subsect of people. And we're all individuals and nothing is monolithic. And we can all find different solutions to similar problems. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. That does bring us to the end of the show, though. And a big thank you for listening all the way through. Although, I'm sure you got some joy out of that i'm sure you got some uh, something to think about maybe uh some relatability maybe so yeah thanks for listening all the way through to the end and a big thank you to the titular titles tier over at patreon.com forward slash almost perfect now this is a top tier it's a ten dollar tier and you get to pick your title right here on the almost perfect podcast and i shout you out at the end of every episode so shout outs to rousseau the storage clerk of subtle heresies in the lesser overberg region Russell Grant, the Far East Correspondent. Neil Green, the Key Grip. Karan Slim, the Almost Perfect Hedge Fund Manager. Rose Ventura, the Director of Purchasing. Karan Chetty, the Assistant to the Regional Manager. Kat Jenkins, the Inevitable Ruler of the Universe. And Queen Swifty. And Stephen Olafia, the Executive Producer. Of course, I want to thank Damien Root for the bad music you hear underneath me. And the banging intro you hear at the beginning of every episode. And uh, lastly... Thank you to you. I will catch you on the flip side.